Bastrop County Sheriff says that they have found the body of a woman along the dirt road of 1441. Now, let me tell you, this morning, 19-year-old Stacy Lee Stites was reported missing and never arrived at work. In 2006, a small documentary film team helped expose how an innocent man ended up on Texas's death row. But my personal opinion when I heard that she had been killed was that Fennell had done it immediately. And I know a number of people around here that felt the same way. It soon became apparent that the case against Rodney Reed was not just a small town affair. And I believe the state knew about it. I believe the district attorney for Bastrop knew about it. I believe the sheriff's department knew about it. And I believe the Bastrop police department knew about it. And I do believe they covered that up. They did not want a fellow officer implicated. In the past 13 years, the evidence has continued to mount in favor of Rodney Reed's innocence. A Georgetown police sergeant is spending the night behind bars. Jimmy Fennell Jr. is accused of sexually assaulting a woman he detained. His guilty pleas today could play a major role in the appeal process of convicted murderer Rodney Reed. Key witnesses have recanted crucial testimony. Did Roberto Bayardo make missteps that hindered justice in some of the most high-profile crime? A man within days of execution now awaiting word of an appeal after Bayardo clarified his conclusions on when that woman died. Key law enforcement officials who oversaw the initial investigation have been charged and convicted for their own misconduct. The man who oversaw the Reed investigation, Bastrop Sheriff Richard Hernandez who also turned out to be a dirty cop and pled guilty to six felonies. In critical scientific medical evidence has been discovered that essentially exonerates Rodney Reed. She had been face down for five or more hours um, in one position before she was turned over to the new position. She was dead around midnight. She was already dead. Yet instead of exonerating Reed, or even retrying him under fair conditions, the Texas courts have decided to set a November 20th execution date for this year. State prosecutors are now asking to execute convicted murderer Rodney Reed. The amount of injustice wrought against Rodney Reed in this case is impossible to measure, and the fact that the state continues to seek his execution defies common sense and human decency. This documentary series is intended to highlight the evidence and the witnesses that prove Rodney's innocence in hopes that Texas halts the execution of this innocent man. On the morning of May 6, 1998, Dr. Roberto Bayardo, Travis County, Texas medical examiner, told a lie. He was testifying during the trial of Rodney Reed, for the capital murder of a local 19-year-old girl, Stacy Stites. When asked by Special Prosecutor Lisa Tanner approximately what time he believed the victim to have died, he answered around 3 a.m. on April 23, 1996. A few years later, I asked him how he came up with that specific time at trial. In your trial testimony, you, you said that time of the death was around 3 a.m. Do you remember how you could have came to that conclusion? We know when she was last seen, and we know when she, the body was found, so we had a precise time. So Dr. Biardo's testimony regarding the victim's time of death was based on the word of Stacy's live-in boyfriend and fiancé and local police officer, Jimmy Fennell, who told police she would have left their apartment around 3 a.m. to go to work. Dr. Bayardo's estimated time of death was not based on any actual medical science. Usually the first question the police officer, the investigators want to know is when did she die because that will influence the investigation of uh, whom to interview and whether who's telling the truth and who isn't. This is something that all medical examiners and coroners learn in, immediately is that there's certain changes in the body that indicate how long somebody's been dead. Dr. Michael Bodden is one of the nation's foremost authorities in forensic pathology. He was a former chief medical examiner for New York City, and he was appointed the chairman of the United States Forensic Panel that investigated the deaths of John F. Kennedy and Martin Luther King. He has performed over 20,000 autopsies throughout his decades-long career. 
After reviewing the autopsy and crime scene video, Dr. Baden, along with two other renowned pathologists, concluded that the victim had died much earlier than Dr. Bayardo had testified, most likely well before midnight on April 22nd. In my opinion, to a reasonable degree of medical certainty, she was dead before midnight of the day, uh, the next day that she was found. She was dead around midnight, she was already dead. Experts also noted it appeared obvious that the body had been moved at least three to four hours after the murder by looking at telltale signs of the body's condition. The appearance of uh, Stacy Seitz's body at the scene where she was found uh, later that afternoon, around three o'clock that afternoon, which shows a pinkish red color on the on the, front areas of her body uh, that are due to uh, what's called lividity, the settling of blood by gravity after death. And in this instance, there was fixed lividity of the front of her body, and that would indicate that she had been face down for five or more hours. Um, in one position before she was turned over into the new position. Lividity, or the gravitational pooling of red blood cells, is a basic forensic indicator of what happened to the body after death. Yet neither rookie field analyst Karen Blakely nor Dr. Bayardo made any mention of this evidence, which is clearly obvious in the crime scene tape. This is the right hand, and it shows that she's laying face up and hand up but the lividity is inappropriate because that only developed when the hand was down, when the hand and forearm were in a downward position. So it would uh, support the uh, uh, the conclusion that she was laying face down, the hand and the arm were face down for at least four or five hours in order for this to still be there. One can see in the tips of the fingers pale, pale whiteness in the second, third, fourth, and fifth fingers. And that's because at the time she was laying face down elsewhere, the fingers were against an object which pressed out the lividity. So it gives some in, in information as to her being face down with a hand down uh, for many hours before she was moved to this position. And finally, the experts agreed that the type and amount of bodily fluids found on the floor of the pickup truck that Stacy and Jimmy Fennell shared, which was found abandoned eight miles away in a local high school parking lot, was indicative of her being placed and kept in that truck three or four hours after she had been killed. And that mucoid type fluid would have come out of her nose and mouth, which is an early part of the decomposition process after we die. This takes three or four hours to develop under these conditions she was in. That time period would make Jimmy Fennell the one and only person who could have killed her. For he testified that he and Stacy were alone in their apartment from 8 p.m. until 3 a.m. on the night that she was killed. The earlier time of death and the proof of movement of the body hours after the murder completely exonerates Rodney Reed, who, by the state's own admission and Jimmy Fennell's testimony, would not have had access to the victim for that long or anywhere near that time period. None of this basic forensic analysis was ever completed by Dr. Bayardo, but without credible medical testimony or an expert of his own, Rodney Reed was at the mercy of Bayardo's lie. Were you surprised if I told you that the defense never called a medical examiner in this case for their own expert? I mean, they called me, so I was there. I mean, they didn't call any extra, another medical examiner, another expert on this case. No, it doesn't surprise me. Counties, if these are poor people, the counties don't, don't have the money to pay for, for, for expert. The circumstances surrounding Bayardo's involvement in the autopsy of Stacy Stites indicates that he may well have been incentivized to testify in favor of the prosecution. We found making money could be at the root of the problem. A 2016 investigative report by Austin's KXAN news team uncovered a decades-long scheme by Bayardo 
to increase his salary by conducting out-of-county autopsies and pocketing the proceeds. Stacy Stites was one of those autopsies. An analysis of Bayardo's near three decades in office shows he consistently performed between 395 and 823 autopsies a year. Over time, Bayardo raked in around $2.6 million, performing autopsies for 45 other counties. To protect his lucrative arrangement, it makes sense that Bayardo would bend his testimony to support the prosecutors who work for the same county that paid him his extra fees. Bayardo specifically testified he did not financially benefit from Stacy Stites' autopsy, though records indicate he clearly did. Despite Bayardo's lack of credibility and his conflict of interests and his own signed statement that now recants his original time of death estimate, Texas courts have refused to even consider the alternative evidence brought forth by Dr. Baden. Dr. Baden, free to leave? Yeah, I'll remember. I might be a more important thing to do. This is important. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. And so Bayardo's lie still stands as a key fact in the case against Rodney Reed that now has him on the verge of execution by the state of Texas. It was a simple lie from a medical examiner that went unchallenged by an overmatched and underprepared defense team but it was a lie that single-handedly covered up the many lies that preceded it in the case against Mr. Reed. Such as the lies of the prosecution, who failed to hand over crucial DNA evidence that placed other police officers and friends of Jimmy Fennell at the scene of the crime, and the lies of the lead investigator, Rocky Wardlow, who covered for Jimmy Fennell by not checking the apartment he shared with Stacy and returning the pickup truck before adequate testing could be completed. And finally, it covered up the biggest lie of all. Specifically, Jimmy Fennell's denial when asked if he was involved in the murder of Stacey Stites. A lie that now has been proven beyond any reasonable doubt by irrefutable scientific facts. I, I knew Stacey, she, she was a year or two older than me. I worked at the HEB in Bastrop. We were talking about her, her engagement ring and I was like, oh, are you so excited to get married? And she said she really wasn't so excited to get married and quickly followed that with saying that she was actually sleeping with a black guy named Rodney. I just didn't realize that what I had to say meant so much in this case. 